Hello, I'm Ren, and today I'll be going through how to navigate and play Project Sakai Colorful Stage. If you don't know what Project Sakai Colorful Stage is, it's a mobile app that was released for Japanese-only audiences in September of 2020. It's a collaborative project between the company behind Bandori and Krypton's Pro Vocaloids. So there's a mix of new random idol characters as well as the infamous Hatsune Miku, Megurine Luka, Kagamene Rin and Len, Mako, and Kaito. However, even though these are the only Vocaloids shown in the game, there are other Vocaloid vocals featured in the game, such as Ia, Gumi, Flower, and VY2V3. The story is basically that there's a Sakai world and the real world, with the Sakai world containing the Vocaloids and the real world containing the other idols. I know there aren't really any story translations at the moment, but it basically goes how any idol-based plot goes, so you're not really missing anything. Like, the characters are just like, we want to be idols! <gasps> Hatsune Miku! Hatsune Miku! And that's it. So far, there hasn't been any signs of an official English translation in the works, so I'm making this tutorial to hopefully help English audiences in playing the game. Since I vaguely remember starting this game and there being a bunch of random questions at the beginning, I'd like to clarify that those questions don't affect anything. Like, I clearly don't remember the exact questions since it's been like a few months and they don't have any bearing on what happens. I'll say, for example, if you say your favorite color is red, that doesn't mean you're going to get a boost with Mako when you're playing the game. It just doesn't mean anything at all. Or if you think one of them may be music related, if you say your favorite music type is pop, it's not going to stick you with the pop group. Right after these questions, at the beginning, you'll be shown the full list of the bands and you can pick which one you want to start off with. To clarify, choosing a band at the beginning isn't like picking a house and fire emblem. You're not stuck with that band forever. All it means is it'll unlock the first part of the band's story for you to view and give you a card relating to all the members in the group. This isn't a special thing either where if you join one band at the beginning you get a special card for picking them as your starter. It basically just goes ahead and gives you all the characters for that group to start playing with. But as you keep playing and unlock the other band's stories, you'll get their base cards as well. So if you're starting off and really want to have Luca to play with from the beginning, go ahead and choose Leo Need as your starting group. Alright, moving on to the actual navigation portion. The screens and navigation on Project Sakai are a mess, so I'm going to start from the far left of the screen to the far right just to keep some order in this guide. In the top left corner of the home screen is the map, or world view. When you click on this, it'll show you an overview of either the regular world or the Sakai world. Starting off with the normal world, it'll give you an overview of all the buildings and will show you what characters are in what location. If you click on a building, it'll take you to that area as well as show you the characters in it. More importantly though, are the buildings with the extra icons at the bottom. If the icon has a shopping cart, which can be seen in both the track area and the yard area, it means that you can buy different shrubs or flowers that act as a boost to character cards that have the same symbol as the plants. When you buy these plants, they also show up in the area. So for example, here in the yard, I've bought a happy flower and a mysterious flower to boost my character cards that have the heart or the moon symbol. Each plant will cost you a few of the little music note plant seed items and some gold coins, which you can get by completing live events, so basically by playing rhythm games. These plants can also be leveled up after their initial purchase and will use up more items the higher the level they are. Going back to the overview of the real world, the shopping mall is the area with the shirt icon and the smiley face icon. Here you can either craft clothes or buy emotes. When crafting clothes, you'll click on the shirt icon, then on the character you'd like to make clothes for, pick an outfit, hit next, pick a color, hit the same next button, and then hit to craft if you have enough material and thread, which can be acquired through playing lives. If there are locked sets of clothes, it means it was either only acquirable through some sort of event, gotcha pool, or purchase. To exit out of this menu, just keep hitting the back arrow next to shop. When buying emotes, click on the smiley face icon and then click on the emote you want. Emotes require having an emote stamp item in order to purchase, which can usually be unlocked by getting closer with characters, so leveling character ranks. Emotes or stamps are used during multi-lives or live concert events. Going back for the final time over the real world, the music shop is the building with the two CD icons underneath it. Going here, there will be two clerks with different music options. The clerk on the left will give you the option to buy new songs. When looking at new songs, it'll show you the difficulty levels as well as who is involved with creating the song. When clicking the second bar, it'll show you the vocal options. Sometimes there's more than one. 
Almost all new songs cost roughly 10 of your music cards, and music cards aren't super rare or hard to get, so you don't have to be frivolous with them. Going back, the clerk on the right will show you covers of songs. Covers aren't provided by every idol or vocaloid, so it just depends when it's available. Covers actually cost special character specific cards that you can receive by gaining a high rank with a character, so I'd suggest saving these for a song you really like instead of spending these willy-nilly because they are a bit harder to get. That's all for the real world pretty much, except I would like to add that some areas in the real world are linked, but not all areas are. So if you go to the Shibuya-esque area, which is called Sukanburu Kolsaten, or Scramble Crossing, here there are two paths that can take you to different areas. For example, if I click on the right path here, it'll take me inside the shopping mall. And once I'm in the shopping mall, I can take the exit pathway back to Scramble Crossing. Since not all the areas are linked though, it's pretty much better to just go back to the world over View to navigate. Now moving on to Sakai, which can be accessed through the world view and hitting the smartphone button in the bottom right corner. Here you can circle through the areas that represent each band. Each area has a shop which lets you buy items to either increase the abilities for a specific band member, the entire band, or for the virtual singers. These items are the exact same as the plants and flowers in the real world as they also show up in the area you buy them in, as well as being able to be multiple levels. However, these items all cost different amounts and different items. For example, for Vivid Bad Squad, I bought Lens Headphones, Mako's Coffee Mill, and the Music Speaker for the Virtual Singers. Each are upgraded and purchased with different items. I don't really know how to identify these, but basically you get them in heaps by completing lives. The last important thing I need to tell you about the map overview is, especially if you're just starting to play, always, always go and check to see who's having a conversation. If there's a bubble over an area with a hot pink new written over it, go and click on that conversation. More often than not, listening through the conversations will give you free gems, as in the same free gems that can be used in Gotcha. If it's an idol speaking, it'll be fully voiced, but if it's a vocaloid, the vocaloid won't fully voice the lines. When clicking on a chat, you can either manually click through it, or you can click the menu button in the top right corner. When the menu opens, it gives you the option to skip the entire chat, which doesn't mean you'll lose the gems, by the way. Put the chat on auto, put it on like a speed run through, which is basically the same as skip since it flies through the conversation so fast. Let's you view the chat log where you can have the line reset by clicking the speaker button. And lastly, have the text removed if you want to take a good screenshot. Alrighty, now that we've covered everything in the map, let's move on to the gotcha area since it's the next one over from the left. There's constantly events going on, with each event lasting limited time and including limited time pools. The first section on the left is for pools that can be bought with free gems. The second is for pools that can be bought for cheaper with actual purchase gems. And the last is a pool that can only be used with a gotcha ticket. Going back up to the first section on the left, there are three types of pools. A daily 100 gem purchased only single pool, a free gem single pool, and a free gem 10 pool. When using these pools, it gives you small music CDs that can be used to purchase limited time cards. You can look at these cards up in the top of the gotcha area by clicking on the small white box next to the music CDs. Here you can look through the current events cards as well as a few past events. So to get a card that costs 300 CDs, you'd need to do 30 pools during that event. They just recently added these little card things, which I'm not entirely sure on how they work. So if someone knows, please leave a message in the comments. I don't really do the gotcha pools, so I can't really speak in depth about them. So if anyone can shed some light in the comments, I would super appreciate it. That's about all for gotcha, so moving on to the next section, which is member. When entering the member menu, there are six sections. Edit, training, live outfit, character rank, character profile, and member cards. The edit button lets you edit and name your team that will join you in lives. There's a total of 10 slots to create 10 different units. For example, the first unit I have here is my main team, and the unit I have in slot 2 is my training team. The button on the bottom left is the reset button, which clears all the cards from the unit. The button on the bottom right is a random sorting or grouping, which maximizes your team based on the options you choose. So for example, I'll select that I only want virtual singers in my group, so I select the virtual singer unit at the top and hit OK. Now the unit has chosen all of my best virtual singer cards to give me the strongest team. Since this is just an example team, I'll hit the reset button to clear it. The first slot in the unit will be the leader, so if you're aiming for higher scores, it's important to put your best card there. Otherwise, it's best to put the card you want to level the quickest through lives there. Also, it's important to keep in mind that you can only have one card of a character in a unit. Moving on to the training section, the first area in the training section allows you to level up specific cards through giving note sheets. Note sheets are acquired by completing lives. The second section is basically like, like if any of you guys play Twisted Wonderland or watch my guide on that, 
The second section basically lets you groovy cards, except they have to be a three star or higher card in this game to do that. When you do this, it unlocks a new photo for your card and adds some strength or ability to it. So like my LUT over here is maxed out, so his picture has been changed. Or if I click on Mako, if I decide to max her out, it'll change her picture to the one on the right and give her a higher maximum level. The third section is Master Training, which will increase the card's overall power. So let's see, for Len here, I've got him up to level four mastering, but if I wanted to get him to level five, all I'd have to do is click on the item listed here and hit the next button and there we go, now he's maximum master level. All right, lastly is the fourth section, which is skill up, which basically increases the skills on each card. Here you have different options to level up, so you could use these purpley gem items or you could use a bronze or silver skill book. That's all for training, so let's go ahead to live outfit. Live outfit just sets the outfit your characters will wear in live events. Miku is a little different though, because there are several different Mikus in this game. So when clicking on her, a box will pop up giving you a list of each Miku, and you can edit them from here. For my example though, I use Len since he's the only one I make outfits for. So after clicking on him, I can change either his head or his body accessories. So let's say I wanted to have him look more traditional. So I put him in a kimono and want to take his headset off. All I have to do is go to the accessory section, which is the right section in the panel and click Nashi. And now he doesn't have any headphones on. If I click the save button in the bottom right corner, this is what he'll look like when I use him in lives so and have a 3D music video in the background. but I like the outfit I had him in, so I'm just gonna exit out of this for now. Now we've got the character rank section. You can increase your character rank by completing the challenges that are listed when you select a character. I know this is a guide and all, but I'm not gonna translate all the challenges. Just keep playing with the character's car and listen to their conversations from the map view and skip through stories and you should be fairly set on completing a good bit of their missions. Increasing rank is important though because it unlocks the ability to challenge a certain character daily and alive as well as get vocal cards for buying covers and stamp cards for getting new emotes. If you want to see how many awards you've gotten in the past or what you'll get in the next time you increase the level with that character, you can click on the present next to their rank and it'll show you. To increase rank, you need to get as many achievements as there are stars next to the present icon. When you get an achievement from completing a challenge, it'll fill up one of these stars so you can keep track of how close you are to gaining a rank. Now we can move on to the last portion at the bottom, the character profiles and the member cards. Clicking on a character profile shows you all the profiles and the characters. To see their like introduction, I guess, click the little button down at the bottom. When you click on it, you can either view the intro with or without vocals. The left turquoise button is without vocals and the right turquoise is with. Lastly for the section is where you can view your character cards and their overall stats. You can also unlock side stories from here, which are seen underneath the card photo. If you've quote unquote groovied a card, you can click on the circle arrows to show the old photo and the magnifying glass icon next to it just expands the picture. Now that we're done with member, we can move on to story. There's both an event story and a main story. The main story takes you through the stories of each band. Again, like I said in the beginning, these are 100% skippable and are all just idle stories. However, you should complete each one as you unlock them because it can give you items or gems. For an example though, I'll click on Vivid Bad Squad's story. Here I can see all the previous episodes as well as new ones. The interesting part about these stories though is that you can see who's in them before watching it. So for this latest story I haven't gone through, episode 14, I can click the eye-shaped or information button to the right of the story and lo and behold, Len is in it. So since there's a character I like in it and I can see he'll be here before clicking through the story, I'll know not to skip it. The story bits work just like the profile where you can get the story with or without the vocals. Also, I forgot to say earlier, but almost anything involving dialogue can be utilized like the chats. So in story, as well as in character profiles, you can skip, autoplay, speed through, or remove the text boxes. You'll unlock story stuff the more you play lives. Moving on to event story, to be honest, I don't really participate in the events and I don't listen or click through any of the story unless Len's there, so I genuinely don't know if there's some secret deal in these event stories. Again, I apologize, I know this is meant to be a guide, but if anyone knows if the event stories are anything different or special, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, they work the same as main stories, as in you can see what characters are in it before you play through it, and so on. Now we can finally move on to the live section. Here you can choose to do a solo live, a multi-live, a character live, view a music video, or participate in a character live. 
Solo lives are basically where you play by yourself with your selected unit and pick whatever song you like on whatever difficulty you like. If you manage to get higher scores or full combos, you can get item prizes. The difficulty select is under the song cover and master difficulty can only be unlocked after getting a really good score on expert level. The two buttons at the top of the song cover are where you can filter or change the listing of the songs. When clicking on the select button, it'll take you to a screen where you can pick which one of your units you'd like to use. For some songs, you can change the vocals or remove the background video if there is one. Under the song name on the bottom left hand side, there may be a button. If you press this, it may give you the option to change the vocals of the song, either because Sakai provided another version or because you bought a cover of it. If there's a video for the song you want to play and you want to turn it off, if you can't read Japanese, basically if you see 2D MV or 3D MV, it means there's a video, and if there's some kanji, it means that the video was either turned off or there was no video to begin with. The settings button is basically if you want to get nitpicky about having skills for your cards turned on or the speed or the volume or something. However, if you want to turn off voices while you're playing songs so the characters aren't conversing while you're trying to listen for a beat, go to settings, hit the middle section, and go under the third option which is under SE and scroll it down. Otherwise, if you don't mess with anything in there, you should be pretty fine. The auto switch just puts the game on autoplay. When playing lives, it'll use up your energy, which you can keep track of at the top of the screen. Energy will refill itself over time or if you level up a rank. You can play lives as many times as you want, but it'll only give you XP to increase your rank when you have energy. When clicking on the live button, you can adjust the speed of the notes coming down, but it's usually better not to mess around with this if you're unfamiliar. Once you've entered a live, you can have the option to either quit it, restart it, or just continue after hitting the pause button at the top right. The retire or quit button is the far left one and will take you back to the home screen. The retry button will restart the song from the very beginning and the continue button just continues from where you paused it. If you choose to retire or retry, it won't use up any extra energy, so feel free to quit or retry anytime. I think that's about it for solo live and multi live is pretty much the same sort of thing except you get more items and play along with other people. In multi live though, you don't get much choice over what song is chosen because each person in the group picks a song or chooses not to pick a song and then one is randomly selected. You do get to choose what difficulty you play at though. The last difference is if there's a 3D background, it will be each person in the group's leader instead of your unit. Now for character lives, where you can challenge a character once per day. These can only be unlocked once you achieve a certain rank with a character. As your rank increases with a character, you can also add more cards into their slot in the daily challenge. The music video portion is just as it says. You're allowed to watch the music video for the songs you own here. However, this only includes the music videos with 3D models. Lastly in the live menu is the virtual live section. The top area shows scheduled lives that can be downloaded. If you click the calendar on the right side, it'll show you the concert dates as well as what characters will be in the live. Since these are scheduled, you'll have to wait for the concert to begin. While you're waiting, you'll be taken to a small park area where you can talk to other people through the chat button, use motion emotes, or use the stamps you've purchased. There's also fun things to explore in this area, such as kicking the big glow ball or running along the piano. If you go up and talk to the little Miku in the area, you can buy more accessories for your little persona. To edit your character and change your available movements, hit the gear with the face next to it in the top right corner. Here you can change your color, accessories, glow stick, and motions. Going back, the bottom two options are for making personal rooms for only you and your friends to access or entering a room code to enter a personal room. So if I go to the button on the left and create a personal room, it'll give me a number I can copy and paste to send to other people. If I take this code and enter it into the left button with the door and key, it'll create a personal room. Now that we've gone through all the bottom menus, it's time to go to the far upper right icons. I'll do these from bottom to top because the top icon has a lot in it. So looking at the clipboard present in three lines, I'll start with the clipboard. The clipboard icon is what lists missions. The first area is the live section, so as you play more live events, you'll gradually unlock more coins and gems. You'll get more if you're a premium member though. The second area contains more story and game related quests. The last section covers special achievements, which can unlock another badge to add to your profile. Now for the present. Basically, just come here to collect the gifts the game awards you, such as logon rewards or new songs. And the second section shows recently received presents. Now for the top right three stripe menu screen. 
In total, there's 15 icons in here. I'll start from the furthest left on the top row and work my way down. The first icon on the top left is the crystal shop. Here you can exchange real world money for in-game gems. The first section is for crystals. The second section includes packages of different items, as well as specific other items such as coins or stamps. The third section is to purchase the premium mission pass where you'll unlock better rewards as well as a special costume. And lastly, the fourth section is where you can purchase the colorful pass, which I guess just increases rewards overall. Honestly, I wouldn't really recommend buying anything if you're more here for the Vocaloids because a majority of the events in Gacha are all centered around these new Bandori company idols. Like, it's not Vocaloid feet Bandori, it's definitely Bandori feet Hatsune Miku. But I mean, if you're actively invested in the Bandori side, then investing some money into this game will definitely be worth it because otherwise getting gems and materials and such is sort of difficult without a pass. The second icon in the menu is the change icon. Here you can convert different items or currency into another item or character card. The third icon is where you can view your profile. Here you can change your name, add your Twitter, change your description, and add any badges. This will be how others will see you in multi-lives or other events. If you click the arrow on the right, it'll give you an overview of how many songs you've cleared and on what difficulty, how many full comboed, how many times you've got an MVP or superstar in a multi-live, the score on challenge lives, and overall character ranks and challenge stages. The fourth icon lets you edit your virtual live avatar if you don't want to go wait in the virtual live area just to do it. The fifth icon is for news or announcements. The first area is for general updates and announcements. The second is pretty much the same. And the third shows you videos or updates from the official sites. The sixth icon shows you all your items. The top section is all the items in your current possession, and the bottom section contains all the furniture or plants you've purchased and what level they are. The seventh icon is member, which if I remember correctly, you can sell or convert duplicate cards you've pulled here for those purple gems. The eighth icon lets you edit your stamp collection for easier access during events or multi-lives. The ninth icon is where you can change speed, background music, vocals, etc. It's the same as when you access it in solo lives. The tenth icon is where you can link your game center and such. The 11th icon is for support. Here you guys can access an FAQ or ask for help, but if you're here, it means you probably don't know Japanese, so this is worthless. The 12th icon is an overview of crystals. It shows you how many crystals you have total, how many were bought, and how many were free. The 13th icon is just a list of credits, the privacy policy, and stuff like that. The 14th icon takes you all the way back to the title screen, and the 15th icon takes you back to the home screen. And with that, we're all done!